I aim to motivate and inspire viewers to see the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the Slow Wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello. Welcome to episode 41 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I am your host. In this episode, I'll give you an update on what's on my needles and it's a growing selection of works in progress, partially because I started a couple of new ones and then I also discovered one that I hadn't finished yet. So, <laughs> oops. And then I'll do another maker's highlight. I think you enjoyed that when I did that a couple of episodes ago. And um, so I thought I'll do another one. And then there is a layer cake section, as always, with um, some new life being breathed into one of the old stalwarts of the layer cake lineup. I hope you enjoy it. But here we first go with the update on what's on my needles. So I already showed you last time that the big project that I'm working on is the Talvinen sweater by Boyland Networks. And I'll show you how much progress I've made with that. I'm still, it's actually quite pathetic progress from my perspective because I did not knit at all last weekend when we had the Easter break because we embarked on a rather ambitious DIY project at home. It basically meant that we worked flat out for five days. We took an extra day off on the Thursday and then worked Thursday through to Monday evening to overhaul our dining room, which included stripping the mahogany floor back because we knew it would be an absolute beast of a job and so it was but we did it we also painted the dining room but the result was that there was absolutely no energy left in me in the evenings to do any knitting so i'm now at a point with the uh, yoke that I've gone just beyond the heads of the birds that I'm knitting. You can see the little head here. And so I'm on the home straight with the second uh, wing. Of course, the yoke is increasing in size, so that bit is slowing down. But once that yoke is out of the way, then I'll be speeding up to work the body of the jumper. Although there is another piece of color, color work above the uh, ribbing at the bottom. So we'll see about that. But so far so good and I'm quite pleased with uh, my colour work. My um, floats are nice and neat. The floats don't get very big with this so you don't actually have to catch your float too often. I think the biggest stretch that I've had is like here for example. There'll be a little stretch of eight stitches and then I'll catch my float once in the middle. So I have a stretch of four, four stitches um, with floats that are not bound in any way. And that seems to be working quite well. It's a nice smooth fabric. So I'm happy with that. And I haven't checked at all how my uh, gauge is doing, but it seems to look okay if I compare it to the section above it, which does not have much in terms of color work. Um, I should measure it though, just to, and especially before I go on with a section without color work, just in case I need to go down in needle size. But I'll get to that, um, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. At the moment though, it's still just doing the color work and I absolutely adore this very, very rich orange color in combination with that beautiful greenish blue turquoise color, pale turquoise color. I think they work really well together. Okay, so enough about that and I'll keep you posted on the progress. At least I'm working on it again. 
However, there's quite a lot of other bits that I'm working on as well, on and off. What I had started before I got onto the Talvinen was a series of these tiny little shapes. I wanted to do a whole group of little shapes, starting with a heart, and then I've done this cute little, gorgeous little star as well, and there's, there's other shapes coming. But now, of course, with the DIY work and the fact that I started the jumper, that's kind of taken a back seat. So I'm going to return to that because I want to do little kits for it with tiny little angs and whatever. The idea is there, but execution with everything that distracts me is a challenge. Let's put it that way. So those are the shapes that I'm working on and more to come. Then this is the kind of almost forgotten work in progress that I have. I think I may have mentioned it before. There's, I mean, come on. I'm in the middle of the heel of the second sock. This is the first sock. And it's one of those projects that because, because it's such a complicated pattern, the whole thing is knit on the bias. Can you see that? And then it's got a very unusual shape for the heel and a stretch of stitches that actually goes across the heel. And that actually sits behind where your Achilles is. It makes the sock incredibly well fitting and snug fitting. I once knitted a pair of these for my husband years ago, and I think he's still wearing them. I cannot, I cannot remember how often I've patched them because they keep wearing out and out and out. And I've years ago again must be two or three years ago i said to him okay i will knit you another pair of them and they are unlike many socks i'm kind of used to socks being mindless these are not mindless you need to really pay attention and i gr tend to grab a sock to work on when i can't bear to pay attention so the two kind of clash i got halfway through the second sock and completely lost the will put them aside and have still haven't returned to them. So it's rather sad. I will finish them. In terms of color, they're of course great for this spring. So I really should give it a push, maybe when I'm not exhausted. <laughs> the problem is when I'm not exhausted, of course, I wanna work on my jumper. So we'll see how long that's gonna take me. Then the other project that I have difficulty returning to, like I said last time, is my little twirly scarf. It's like doing penance when I show these because it's kind of embarrassing that I'm not working on them. I hope I'll get to them eventually. <laughs> and you'll be the first to know whether I do or not. I promise. I hope this gives somebody hope. <laughs> You're not the only one of you do things like this as well. Am I trying to take myself out of a hole? I think so. And then last but not least, this is a pair of socks that I cast on when I was too tired to work on my jumper. It was a sock blank that I bought very recently. It was actually in a sale. I will put the details below. And it's just gorgeous. I mean, look at it. I like the fact that it's got quite a lot of white in it, quite a lot of undyed. But this, having knitted a couple of, knitted up a couple of sock blanks now, I have a better understanding as to what the colors will do when you look at something like this and then have to imagine what it's going to look like knitted up. I, I can imagine that now. So there's nothing to see yet, just a very meekly speckled tiny little cuff start of a cuff but those speckles that's of course going to be the biz there are going to be lots of speckles in these socks and they're going to be very irregular and some are going to be pale and some of them are going to be very bright and i can't wait i'm excited to work on this and this is mindless knitting because they're just vanilla socks very plain 
the uh, uh, numbers of stitches and numbers of rows, etc., that I've pretty much memorized for my husband. Another pair of socks for my husband. Let him never complain again. So that's my um, my last work in progress that I've got sitting around me when I'm knitting to remind me that they all need attention. But it's also lovely to have this whole little group and go like, hmm, what shall I work on now? I rather enjoy that. So I'm not a very monogamous knitter a lot of the time, unless I am specifically grabbed by a vision that I have to finish before I can do anything else, which is very much what this was, this lovely, lovely soft and felted poncho that I made using the John Arman Yarnadelic. I'm nearly done with the work on it and this got shelved because I was racing to finish my website. Um, my daughter had her skates on, she was doing a lot of the work for me and with me. So we thought, you know what, let's do a final push and get it launched just before Easter. Also, because I knew I had that Easter DIY project over the weekend. So we managed it. But as a result, this got pushed to the back again. So it's an ongoing juggle as to what gets done first. I'll get there. And uh, I've been talking to Juliet about doing kits for these. And it's all looking very, very hopeful. So again, I'll have to promise you more about this soon more information about this soon as well as a pattern please bear with me on it and i'm sorry i have to keep asking you for your patience still a one man band one woman band so i cram as much in my days as i can talking about cramming much into your days that leads me very nicely into the maker's highlight that i've added to today's episode so let me show you who I'm talking about. Today in the Maker's Highlight, I would like to talk to you about Hayley Trizais. Hayley is a most fabulous and very inspirational artist. And now I can Proudly say also friend of mine and friend of the slow wardrobe. This is a picture of Hayley in one of her more inspirational pieces. Inspirational in the sense that they are very versatile and can be worn in different ways. But you may have seen Hayley before if you've been following my podcast for a longer period of time. I interviewed Hayley at her studio for episode 13 of the Slow Water podcast, which was uh, aired in December of 2019. So if you didn't watch that episode, I urge you to go and have a look. It really is a wonderful introduction to Hayley in her and her work. And the reason I wanted to do a maker's highlight of Hayley today is because her journey for the last year really since I did that interview has been very inspirational I think. Our contact with Hayley started when I saw her sell her wares and sell her beautiful garments. She does, I'm showing you different examples of her designs at Wonderwall specifically. That's where I met her for the first time but she does a lot more and one of the real uh, recognizable parts of her work is the way in which she sews garments together. It's not just with straight lines, but it's much more sculptural. And that gives you a bit of an idea as to how her brain works. I do not see Haley as a fashion designer. I see Haley as a sculptural artist. The photograph that you're looking at now is Hayley in a piece that she made, that she sculpted using layer cake 
linen offcuts. We have been sending the, uh, or I have been sending the layer cake offcuts to Haley for a number of years now because I knew she was always preferring to work with uh, pieces that other people would throw away that, that had no practical, direct practical purpose. So she used to work with pieces that she would find in charity shops, etc. And as our production um, numbers went up, I saw an opportunity to keep her in fabric if you like, with a more steady stream of fabrics that were a bit more repeatable or that she could work with more often so she would be able to get more of a feel of it rather than having to start from scratch with a new piece of fabric that she had never worked with before. So we've been giving her the uh, scraps for a number of years now. And this is one of the examples of the kind of piece that she will make using them. Now this is doing everything in one color and of course she also makes lots of pieces in lots of different colors and very often also different fabrics combined which I think is all fantastic. Now she is very multifaceted not just in the way she uses her fabrics and what she makes with them but also in what she does in general in her life. She is a qualified shaman. She has been on that journey for a number of years. She's done a multi-year uh, study in that direction and she practices as a shaman or shaman as well. And if you watch the episode 13 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast where I interviewed her, you will hear her talk about how she is looking to, or how she was at the time, looking to integrate that part of her life more with the making of the, the, the garments and with her fiber and fabric related work, if you like. So she had at that time, if I remember correctly, tried out making a couple of sacred coats as she called them. And she makes the coats from scratch. I'll show you examples here. But as she makes them, she imbues them with certain types of energy. And that will be different from one coat to the next. And she will then take a coat to a show or this put it somewhere on display and somebody will be drawn to it very often for reasons that they don't recognize and it's because the energy in the coat and the person looking at that coat connect with each other and it ends up being an almost irresistible attraction it's like the coat and the person match that coat is the right garment for that person at that time in their lives it's really really special so that is something that haley has been working with um, for the past year and a half but there's something else that is that jumps out when you see these designs i'll show you another of Haley's designs with uh, layer cake fabrics where the way of stitching that she does really jumps out. She calls that her scribble stitch. And that way of stitching, that way of moving the fabric underneath the sewing machine, of course, allows her to sculpt. And she started exploring that sculpting with fabric more and more and started making pieces like this. So what you are seeing is a cowl shaped garment that can be worn right next to an interpretation of those colors in a shape that is a piece of art that hangs on the wall. I think it is a genius trans translation. It's a ge genius journey, I think. And it's a real, it, to me, it shows real progression in her thinking and in her art. She then found herself towards the end of last year and early this year with a very challenging situation of a parent who was starting to fade away. It was clear that Haley's father was going to pass away and that it would take some time. And with her work as a shaman, she tried to 
support and guide her father towards his final days. Of course, because it's her father that also creates a lot of a lot of anguish, a lot of sadness and a lot of uncertainty in her life. And she saw an opportunity with an art challenge that she found on on Instagram of all places to channel all of those feelings and all of what at that point was still her reality into her work in the form of a daily, imagine that, a daily challenge to create a piece of art. And she started creating pieces like this. They absolutely take my breath away and I don't think I'm the only one. And the reason that I ended up wanting to share that with you now was that I saw one of the pieces that she was producing as part of this journey on Instagram. And she was saying very clearly that she was finishing this piece to sell it. And she was telling me this in the same week that my husband was offered a new job which is new and scary and a bit of a jump into the unknown and look at the piece of art that Haley had created a jump into the unknown finding yourself on the edge of a void being attracted and repulsed at the same time. It's a combination of stitches and paint and fabric. I thought for somebody who's going into a new job and who is excited and feels some trepidation at the same time, I mean, he shouldn't, he's going to walk it really. I thought this would be a very fitting present. He's delighted with it. I gave it to him and then took it back to show it to you here now. But before the day is over, it will have pride of place in his home office and he'll be able to look at it every day as he takes his first steps on his journey into this new challenge. So, all this to say, we're all on journeys and that goes for our everyday lives as well, really. I absolutely adore Haley's work. I think what she does is very enriching and can enrich and touch so many others. So I hope you'll have a look at her work maybe uh, purchase a piece of art or one of her garments, you will really get to enjoy whatever you decide to share with her. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Haley, for the materials that you sent to me to show here. And thank you for allowing me to purchase this piece of art. It will be cherished forever. So that's it for the maker's highlight. So, uh, let's have a look at layer cake. Okay, let's do this. We're going to talk about the trusty layer cake apron. The apron was the second ever layer cake that made it onto our hangers. This is actually a revised version of the apron that we used to make. What we used to make was called the pinny. If I've got any photographs of it left, I'll show you one here. And we changed it because there were just too many reports to my liking of people catching themselves or catching the penny at awkward moments, 
at the um, cord that used to run through the bottom that was tied at the sides and that was to create the same space, the same space, to create the same shape that we are creating in the apron with the sewn down pleats. And those pleats have replaced the ruching and the cord. People would tie the cord too tight rather than tying it back on itself. They would tie the front and back together and then catch themselves on it and things like that. Also, the back was slightly different. And I specifically liked the idea of making this apron look more like the traditional apron. I still wanted it close so it can be worn like a little dress like I'm wearing here. But I liked the idea of having the crisscross straps at the back, which end up pulling it around your torso like it does now. So what you get, depending on how tight it fits you, is a little bump of fabric in between the X shape at the back that is being pulled from the front to make it look fitted at the front. So if I wear something more bulky underneath it, that little loop in the back slowly disappears as the apron gets more filled up. And the idea behind it is that it kind of streamlines your silhouette of what you're wearing underneath. So that's, those are the main changes. Now, what you're looking at at the moment is a fabric that we've used for the apron for a while, which is the pinstripe, but with a twist. I've taken one of the colors from the pinstripe, which is the charcoal, and made the pockets in charcoal as well as the straps, or rather, of course, asked Andrea to make the pockets and the straps in the charcoal. The result of that is that there's a bit more visual interest in the garment and it really emphasizes the different elements of the design. And the idea to do this came to me after I had asked my fabric suppliers, my linen suppliers, to weave the pinstripe with two other contrasting colors. And I'm gonna show you those today because I decided that it was high time to give the apron some more love. As uh, some of you may be aware, we tend to make the apron in a more limited range of colors that we very specifically select. And those colors for a big part are different from the regular linens that we use for the rest of the layer cake collection. There are two fabrics that have sneaked across one was the pinstripe and the other one is there to my left, your right, the uh, black gingham. I think those two are particularly effective in an apron, but I never wanted to take all the cross weaves across to the apron. Uh, so first off, there is the pinstripe, but now with those contrasting pockets and straps. And I'm wearing it here as a dress. I talked to you about wearing an apron as a dress last time. It is when I, with my five foot 10, wear a size one on its longest length, it just about reaches my knees, which means that for most of you, the apron worn by itself will be just below your knees, depending on how far you pull it up. Of course, if you start pulling it up further, then you might get to knee length or above, but it's most likely to be around your knees or slightly below, which makes it very wearable as a little dress. And the other thing that I've done in response to the ongoing requests to give you styling ideas, what kind of things can you combine and how can you tie layer cakes into the rest of your wardrobe, is I very often talk about repeating a color in your shoes that is the color of a top, whereas everything else in between is completely different. And I've tried to really emphasize that here. So I've got a top on that is actually in browns and beiges and a sand color. It's got something slightly orangey in it as well, but it is in no way similar to the colors that are in my apron. 
Then I've teamed the apron with black tights to keep it as neutral as possible. And then I've repeated the colors that are in the top with my shoes. The shoes are very, very similar, not completely the same, but very similar in the colors that they've got in them to the top. And that does that whole thing of tying the outfit together. If I'd be wearing this outfit with regular black shoes, then the top might fly, might feel and look slightly out of place. But repeating those colors, and in this case, it's the pattern as well, but it wouldn't have to be the pattern. It's just repeating the colors in the shoes ends up creating a, a complete look. It integrates the look, if you like. So I wanted to show you that as like an unexpected choice of pattern. Who would think of wearing a leopard pattern against a pinstripe? I love those kind of contrasts. And then by pulling it off or pulling it off by wearing the shoes is kind of the icing on the cake. Playing with colors like that is really one of my passions. So moving on. Um, I'll go back to a plain top and plain shoes with this apron first and then we'll build it up from there. Let's go. Here it is with simple black shoes and a simple black top as neutral as I can make it. So it's just that black backdrop against which the apron then shines and I think it's really effective. You can then dress that up more if you like, add layers and make it suitable for colder weather or for a look that you like more. Let's go for some baggies. These are the baggies that I'm wearing at the studio today. They're my black herringbones and I'm wearing them to death. I think I've told you already. I, um, I've washed them numerous times now. I suspect, I haven't tried it, but I suspect that the herringbone fabric, even though we asked the factory to pre-wash it, I just have a sneaky suspicion that if I were to throw it in the dryer, it would shrink more. And I haven't tried that yet. I should do a, a, a drying test really with a piece of fabric to prove it, but that's my gut feel. So my advice, if you have herringbone linen, Washing machine, no problem. I've washed it a number of times and it hasn't shrunk a millimeter on, at 40 degrees. But hot dryer, I would refrain from that. Don't, don't go there. So add one more layer to this. How about a little mini tab in steel? Isn't it great? I think this is an example where I'm wearing three different layer cake garments that can be worn just the three of them in so many different ways. Wearing all three of them together, dropping the mini tab art and having the apron and the baggies, then taking the apron off, put the mini tab art back on so that I wear the baggies with the mini tab art. I could wear the mini tab art over the apron without the baggies. And every time you make a change, you get a different look and then by working it with different tops, different tights, different types of sh shoes, different hair, different shawls, you can create so many different looks. And you're still only three garments in, in terms of layer cake investment. I'm gonna add a little, um, just a, a very fine um, summary. I think it's a cotton little cardigan to it, to again, add garments that are non layer cake related. There we are, little black cardi. This happens to have a little hood. That's just a coincidence. Doesn't have to have a hood at all, but it's just showing a, a, a little extra layer. And of course, a cardigan like this could be more bulky or it could be a sweatshirt material hoodie, for example, would look great. And as an extra layer, when you're running out to get some groceries, go out and just need a little extra layer don't bother with a coat, just put an extra, could be a hand knit on top of your outfit and it would look great and in terms of color really together. Now you can very easily jazz this up by making that last layer a very sharp contrasting color. 
let me quickly show you before we'll finally go to the next color of the aprons. There, so even though the entire outfit is very neutral, including the shoes, you can then bring in a lovely contrasting color over the top and make the whole outfit sing. This is a synergy top without the knitted sleeves. It's one of the last teal ones that I have. I unfortunately don't have any more step tops in the teal, but I've got a couple of the synergy tops left. Um, and um, I'm, we're also working on a smaller version of the step top, which will be followed by a smaller version of the synergy top as well, uh, which is going to be shorter, both front and back, a lot less voluminous in the body, but still oversized. So we're I'm trying to make it in a way that it can be worn by lots of different heights of people as well. So it's still oversized, but not quite as voluminous then that smaller step top will be the small to medium size and the existing one will be the large to extra large size. So a zero one and a two to three roughly. But like, like I've said before, I really saw this as a one size fits all garment. And it's just that people tell me they love the shape, but they would love a version that's not quite as oversized. So we'll make a smaller version of the same garment and it'll work. I've tried the smaller version on. I can easily get away with wearing that even though it's smaller. So I hope you're going to like it, but I'm kind of running ahead. <laughs> this is it. We're finally able to work further in advance, which is wonderful that it's not all last minute and things can be developed out further before we let them loose on you. So that should mean um, even better construction and even better fit going forward. But back to the aprons. I'm a bit on my soapbox this morning. Forgive me for that. Um, back to the aprons and I'll finally show you color number two. And here it is. What do you think? Based on our teal, I've gone for a lighter version of the teal in combination with the um, dark colors of the pinstripe. So whereas the pinstripe, the original pinstripe is black and gray and white, this is a pinstripe of black and gray and a light version of the teal. And of course, the stripes, the ones that stand out as stripes, become the black rather than the white in the original version. I think it's got a very retro feel. I'm wearing it slightly shorter. Look, I've gone to the that second setting in terms of the buttons. So it's gone slightly above my knees. And that also kind of raises this waistline, just like with our overalls, which are high waisted and then curved in at the waist. The same goes for the apron, which creates a beautiful silhouette when you wear it like this. Can you see that it grabs me just a little bit higher? I apologize for the um, white bralette. I thought, oh, I'll wear a white top. And then I thought, no, I'll go with the black. Now, of course, the bralette shines through. So, <laughs> but you get the idea. And, um, well, we all wear bras, don't we? So I'm not worried about that bit. It just would have looked nicer, I think, in black, but hopefully you can see through that. The point, though, is that it's more fitted and that silhouette is what we are after with the apron, as I explained before. Oh, I have to jump, keep jumping in and out because I keep having to blow my nose. I don't know why, but my nose is running like crazy. So bear with me <laughs> between the white bralette and the runny nose. <laughs> We're at pre as professional as ever. <laughs> anyway, back to teal. Of course, the teal is the teal that we use across the rest of the collection. So that means that you can pick other teals from the layer cake range and wear them together with this apron and they'll just look lovely. Let me grab one and show you. For example, here it is with the teal herringbone baggies. Of course, it will go beautifully with the black herringbone baggies as well that I've just worn or the steel ones because of the gray and the black in here. They 
although if you want to color coordinate and stay in the same spectrum but can it be fun when you start going to contrasts let's show you some contrast how is this or let's just keep going how is this and they all go and they all work together in terms of their lines because we make sure that those lines follow the same route so they sit nicely on top of each other lots of color lots of different texture but all coordinated you'll see the purple coming back in here you see the teal coming back in here coordination station and I love playing with color like this, but you don't have to. It depends on your mood and what you are comfortable with. And there are lots of layer cake ladies who start with very, very carefully selected and very careful colors. And as they get more comfortable in how they wear it, they start venturing into new directions with their colors, which is so exciting to see. And they love sharing that journey and that story with me, which absolutely makes my day. If I hear from someone who pushed herself right out of her comfort zone, tries a new color for her and has never had so many compliments for her outfits in her life as when she did that, that is just lovely. So keep the feedback coming. I adore it. Meanwhile, there's one more color of apron to show you. Let me get it. The red, here it is. For those of you who follow my little hints and teases on Instagram and some of you, the bows that your parcels have been tied with, you will have seen this already coming down the pike. It took me a while to decide what I was gonna do with these fabrics actually, because they have a bit of a retro feel about them and I really wanted to play that up in the garments that I chose for them. Hence settling on the apron together with the fact that the apron really needed a little bit of new life blown into it. I hope you love these. We have We have contrasted the red in this pinstripe with the red cross weave for the straps and the pockets. And of course, you can then pull any of the other reds in from the layer cake selection. I'll grab some high lows and show you those because it just looks lovely together. So a pair of high lows worn low to show off their lovely balloony shape at full length or even better when the weather starts getting warmer worn high tied up to create that lovely blousey effect at the bottom and doesn't that look great in together with the round effect of the apron at the bottom with the pleats sewn in let me show you this with the new white shirt because that would be a wonderful combination. All three of the colors go with the white shirt, but I got carried away <laughs> with all my other stuff, so I haven't shown it yet. Let me go put it on. And here it is. White shirt, new red pinstripe apron and the red high lows. I think it's just the most glorious springtime outfit. Like I said last time, I've got something with <laughs> aprons in springtime, so I can fulfill that association to my heart's content this spring. Let's play a little bit more with different colors with this red, because I start with a very coordinating color to begin with, but then play a little bit more with contrasts here as well. This is the same red as is the basis for the red cross weave blended with black. So although this is a coordinated color, it does make a contrast. And if the step top is not for you, 
then short duster may be more your thing. Or a long duster, finally in a contrasting color. Ah, springtime. What's a springtime more than one of these in this gorgeous, gorgeous ochre? Let's keep going with contrast. I've got the bit between the teeth now. How about picking up on that glorious ochre with the bitter lime of the palazzos? And if this is too much with the red in between, then go back to a calmer color. Who of you thought I was gonna go back to the black one? No. See how this is still very colorful, but it's calmer than the red. I hope you can see it. And how jolly and cheerful this is by teaming it with colors that have more yellow in them, which are both, of course, the okra and the bitter lime. But there's more. I wanted you to, or wanted to show you what the apron does with another bottom that you might have in your wardrobe as well that is not layer cake just a pair of jeans i had to dig to find a pair of jeans not just a pair of jeans that i have but a pair of jeans that fits me for reasons i've explained in previous episodes but i found a pair so i'm going to show you what that looks like in combination with the new apron apron with a crisp white shirt and a pair of jeans they look a little bit long on me because i don't tend to wear these with, i tend to wear them with boots rather than uh, the very very super flats and i do like them full length so i wear them in a way that they just stay off the ground but for illustration purposes today this will do i think the combination of one of these with a pair of jeans is a bit of a match made in heaven, especially in these retro-ish kind of colors. Let me quickly switch back to the red to show you what that's like with the blue of the jeans, just because it's got that little bit of extra contrast. Lovely line of the apron in the back with the cross straps white shirt, the blue jeans, ready for action. Great work outfit, great outfit for around the house, in the garden, you name it. Springtime is here and so are the new aprons. You can have a look and pre-order them on the website. The pre-orders open throughout the, uh, all the way to the last weekend of April which is virtual Wonderwall. So at the end of that weekend, we close the pre-order and then we will, Andrea will produce your orders for these aprons in the first two weeks of May. Can you believe it? So have a look, ask me any questions that you have about them. I'll be sending out a newsletter with a special offer for them this coming week. So keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I'll see you again soon.